Live from New York, welcome to Rockin' Ink MC. Welcome to another edition of Rockin' Ink MC. It's going to be another great show. But you know, guys, I had a great weekend, and it was a nice weekend here in New York. I want to welcome back one of my buddies, my buddy Bobby O. He's in a little bit of a motorcycle smash-up a few weeks ago. I thought he was never going to get back on a bike. He bought a new bike this week. We got out yesterday. We did a lot of riding. We rode for like six, seven hours all over Long Island. But I want to welcome my buddy Bobby O back. And um, have a great show for you. Things are moving along. I had a lot of good things coming up. I want everybody to know that um, I'm moving along. I'm going to get some other things happening here. I'm going to have some guests, musical guests that I'll be interviewing coming up. I have next week also. I'll tell you about it in a little, little while. But right now I want to tell you what I got going on tonight. I have um, my model spotlight, Lena Page. She's from um, Lincoln, Nebraska. Beautiful girl. Wait until I show you that one. We'll get to her in a little while. Also, my Reverb Nation music spotlight is Crash Midnight. And um, these guys are great. They're from Boston. And, um, the Reverb Nation thing is going great. I got another month. You got the rest of July and the rest of August with that. And I'm going to try to continue that because there's a lot of great bands out there that are coming up or unsigned coming up that um, have great videos. And I'm trying to get them on here and I get to show them to you guys out there, all right? Also, I want to get to Bougie and the girls. We're actually going to have a little segment with the girls. The girls are getting a little crazy with some drunk people out in the lobby of a hotel. We'll get to Bougie in a little while. Also, um, what were they thinking? We had a great segment last week. We did crotch tattoos, and I got inboxes and calls and everything. People loved it. And I want people to know, if you have something that you like about the show or dislike, hit me up on Facebook. Let me know out on the Facebook. Don't inbox me because I want people to see what people are saying, all right? So I appreciate what everyone's saying, but I want people to put it out up on the Facebook page so people can see it. But we had a great segment last week. This week, we're going to get to belly tattoos. I got some funny ones. But, I mean, last week, the crotch stuff was great. We'll... Maybe do a second segment on that if we can get more of those in. Also, I want to welcome my guitar guest, Constantine, over here. It's from um, Alice in Coverland, one of our local bands here. And we'll get back to him. He'll be taking us in and out of our commercials today. All right, also, tonight, I have um, the honor to have two great guests here. All right? I know my one guest for a long time now. He has a big part in the tattoo industry, and we're going to find out what he has done to the industry and helped for this industry back in the day and up to today. So I want to get to my guest. I have Brian Murphy from three, Third Dimension Tattoos up in Philadelphia, out in Pennsylvania actually, and I have Coney Island Carlo. Let's get to our guest and um, we're going to start this off. How you guys doing? Good, good, Jay. How are you? Nice having you guys here. Thank you. I haven't Hi, seen you in a while, Paul, and nice meeting you finally. Yeah. 
Well, it's been great. And um, there's a lot of history here. So what I'm, I try to bring in some old timers because the old timers can really tell us what's going on in the industry, where it started and where it's gone. So this is going to be a great show today because Carl has been involved in a lot of things from years ago. I mean, I think when I was born, things sort of started and what <laughs> happened in the industry here in New York and what the politicians did, and we'll get to all of that in a little while. But we're going to talk to Brian, and um, Brian is a unique artist. He's not just a tattoo artist. He's an amazing painter besides. And his tattoo work, he brings out that painting in his work also. So you have to ha see, like... His stuff looks like a painting when it's on you. It's great. And he, he goes into the 3D detail also. I do a lot of research finding my skit stuff for like um, what were they thinking. And I, I do some research and I did today actually some research. I'm looking for some really great tattoos. And believe it or not, I've seen a lot of your stuff come up. And I was like, Thank wow, you. that's interesting. I have Thank him on you. the show this week and I've seen a lot of your show stuff come up. And I was looking for stuff for my show. Thank you. You know, um, you. some 3D-ish stuff and um, a lot of big pieces and so if it's up in the google searches there you know it's got to be good people looking at Thank it you. and um people like it so what i want to do is um we're going to talk to brian for a little bit and then um we'll we'll get carlo chiping in here and then i'm going to get the carlo story on the the whole tattoo industry also so i know brian you started out i think you're from staten island right yes sir so it mm -hmm. seems like staten island just has a big part in the industry right oh you yeah should know. I think it's more for Brooklyn that the, the people migrated to Staten Island from Brooklyn. Weren't you born in Brooklyn? I'm, I'm from, St I mean, my family's yeah. from Brooklyn. I'm from Staten Island, but... Brian actually I'm worked for me a long time ago, the, about 95, 96, like that. Yeah, yeah, a while ago. I mean, I, I, was, I was working to b before it was even, before it was legal in, in mm -hmm. Staten Island, so, I mean... And that's it, good, because we're going to talk about that <laughs> stuff in a little <laughs> while, when, when it was legal and not yep. legal. So yep. also, you started out, which is interesting, because a lot of the tattoo artists back in the day started out as graffiti artists, mm -hmm. and that's something I, I did some research, so I might ask okay. you some stuff, you might be a little surprised. Okay. So you did right. start out doing graffiti. Yes. So you yes. were painting up the city. Yeah, I mean, I, I, did, it, I was greatly influenced by... I mean, movies like Beach Street and stuff when I was, you know, when I was young and the whole, uh, during the 80s mm -hmm. and stuff, the whole, you know, the beginning, beginning of hip-hop, the, the, the origin of hip-hop where, um, you know, where people really cared about the artwork. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was a really positive type, you know, it was a type positive time if you lived through it, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, yeah, I kind of just stuck with it and... Uh, for, you know, went from that to tattooing and tattooing to the to the actual oil painting and, you know, 22 years later and, you know. But you also had a lot of ups and downs in your life. Yes, sir. So you had a really <laughs> bad downtime in your life. Yes, I did. You want to chime in did, about that? Uh, sure. I mean, I, I yeah, you were possibly I, I, homeless I, at one point. I, yes, I was homeless at one point. I lived in a homeless shelter in, uh, over in uh, Manhattan, uh, you know, uh, Wow, that had to be uh, Jesus. That was after I worked. That was after I. After you worked. That was like around a little bit after See, I. So does that lead me to the homeless shelter? So so yeah. so a lot of people don't understand like when what people go through. So you had a point in your life where you were, you can't get any lower than that, right? So how do you pull right. yourself out of that? <sighs> uh, I, 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 yeah, I, I, it's hard to put that into words, but uh, I mean, yeah, that, I. I would say that I'm trying to think of the age I was. I had to probably be about twenty, twenty four, twenty yeah, tw yeah. nineties. Well, I started tattooing in ninety two, so you know, so, you know, I what was I? Yeah, probably the late nineties, okay. uh, something like that. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it was uh, so you get middle life, of the winter. You get your life yeah. back together. And then you're out there. You're doing your painting and all of that stuff. So. When did you leave the New York area and go to Pennsylvania and I would, open up a shop? I would say about 10. It's been about 10 years. 10 years? About 10 years. I've How did you there. go in that direction to go down, down to that area? I actually had a friend that, that had owned the shop that, that was in Pennsylvania, and he wanted me to come help him out. And uh, I moved up here, um, uh, up here, like I'm in Pennsylvania. Yeah, I moved, I moved up here and moved to Pennsylvania, and, uh, you know, kind of didn't really work out exactly the way I wanted it there, and mm -hmm. then I ended up 
opening another shop, which is where I am now, and I've been there pretty much since since I went to Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you're involved in um, a lot of gallery stuff. You do because you got great artwork, so you put okay. your stuff out there in, in galleries. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I, um, I've done some shows, all you know, different different places. Uh, I tried uh, a couple years ago going more into. Uh, you have the the tattoo art mm -hmm. type stuff, and then there's more of like a, like some of the art that you see in some of the galleries in Manhattan are uh, more um, not so realistic type more stuff, of but, uh, right? Type more of, of a yeah, impressionistic type stuff. It's a uh, it's like two different worlds. Yeah. You have the, you know. I have a few pictures. Uh, if we could bring up the pictures, Tommy, you want to push the screen this way so he can actually see him because he doesn't know what I'm going to show. <laughs> so you can bring up some of the pictures here. I got like four or five pictures and I think the first one is actually showing you in an art gallery. Probably one of the art rally galleries that you were Oh, that's a, re with. yeah, that's a, yeah. Yeah, that, that's the Shulman Gallery okay. and, and that's a part of the Luzerne County College and uh, that's a recent show that, that, that I do. That show is still on. Um, I don't know the exact date that it ends. Okay. But, um, yeah, the, so people, your work's there and people still go to that thing? Yes, yes. Yeah. And we just did a, a like a, they, they do a, a beginning, a, a, an opening mm -hmm. to the gallery, and then in the middle they do like a, a question and answer panel for, that's open to the public. There was some school teachers, students, stuff like that, that came that came mm -hmm. to X, um, me and some of the other artists. It was Probably before. a lot of FIT kids going there. So let's Different. go to the next picture. So this oh, is, okay. um, explain that's that. That's in progress. That, yeah, that, that's an in progress. Um, the, I, was, I was trying to figure out to myself why uh, to get a direction with my artwork. Mm -hmm. And I remember being a kid and driving uh, through the, uh, over the BQE towards the city. And you would look into Brooklyn and it, it looked like the place was a war zone. It was kind of demolished. And everything looked all burnt apart and destroyed, and then you would just see this beautiful graffiti, and it was it. It just as a kid, it inspired it me. Inspired so that one. Um, that's it. That's in progress, and okay. um, you know, I will that, the next one. There. That one right there. That's actually uh, a, a friend of mine. That's Darren White's work mm -hmm. that that had done that particular one that was given to me as a gift, and he does uh, guest spots with me at Third Dimension. Okay, let's go to the next one. I love skulls, so this okay. one intrigued me. That's like a war type, you know, uh, you know, the skull with dropping the nuclear, uh -huh. nuclear bomb right there. That's a digital painting. I did that on an iPad. Oh, really? Yes. Now this one is crazy. Mm -hmm. Explain how you did this, because this is that, digital, I think. Also, that's yeah. I did that with a a, a Wacom drawing tablet on a on a MacBook Pro. You know, basically a drawing tablet on Photoshop, uh -huh. but it's it's done exactly the way a regular painting is done. It's just done <coughs> a little different digitally. Way. Yeah, you know, it's uh, you know, and uh, that's a that's a great shot, great yeah, shot. Thank you. But um, yeah, that that's some of his painting stuff. I'll show you some of his um tattoo stuff in a few minutes before we go to commercial. But um, what would you say your style is? Because I've had a lot of people in and out here. I've researched a lot of people, and you really cover the grounds on the painting side, on the tattoo side. You know, your stuff is 3D-ish, it looks like paintings, it's real. Even your right. portraits are crazy. Thank you. you know, I even have Thank a picture in the, in the video that I'm going to show in a little while. The last picture is this girl's face, and it's mm -hmm. just crazy. It's Thank unbelievable. You. It's really, really good. So good Thanks. work there. Yeah. So what would you say, what What's kind of style? Like yeah, what, yeah, what would you call your type of I, style? I think it's, it's uh, I think with any artist, it's, you kind of try to develop stuff as you go, whether it's music or art, and uh, it's it's pretty much just the combination. I've been through every era, you know. I've been doing it for mm -hmm. so long. When I started, it was like tribal, and you know, you go through all these different uh, eras, and you kind of pick up little pieces. You know, at at this point, I'm trying to I'm trying to keep a realistic look to the work, mm -hmm. um, without being too rigid with it. I don't want to. I don't want my work to be um, rendered to every little tiny, you know. So what, what's a lot of the people coming into you? What, what's the majority that you're doing? What type of a tattoo? Are you doing a lot of portraits or it's just random stuff? It's sort of, it, 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 I start with some type of image sometimes mm -hmm. and I just apply my approach to the, 
to the image. So um, almost like a jazz musician would start something and not really know where they're going to go with it. And, Once you start it, you um, put the pieces together. The people I tattoo are really cool, and they know the, you know, we're familiar with each other. We've been working well, when you know an artist is good, mm -hmm. you can trust. Because I've been to, you know, like my, one of my artists, this guy Popo. Yeah, he, he's, see, yeah. he's drawn it's it on a, yeah. me, and I would see these lines, and I didn't even know what I was getting, but he mm -hmm. knew what I wanted. So yeah. I had to trust him, yeah. you know, because I had to wait till he started it, right? Yeah. Once he started it, I yeah, can't say it like Popo. it. Yeah. Right? So, but that, that's yeah. great. I really like that, and, um, you know, it's, it's great. Now, are you, like... Solidly booked. How long before someone could come yeah. in and get something done? With you? Uh, right now, it, it's looking at a little bit over a year right now. Wow. Yeah. So I think I guess it's, I'm lucky to get you here tonight. <laughs> well, if you, I'm lucky to be here tonight. <laughs> right, I'm lucky great. to be here tonight. Yeah. That's great. So what I want to do right now, I want to go to the, I'm going to go to the video of Brian's work, and then want to come back. We'll go to Con. He's going to take us out to a commercial. We'll be back with Carlo and Brian. Worldwide Tattoo Supply is one of the largest suppliers in the world and your number one resource for top quality, affordable tattoo and piercing supplies. Technical Worldwide Tattoo Supply is the number one supplier of tattoo inks in the world with more than 200 products including Mom's Ink, Philadelphia Eddie's Traditional Inks, Paolini Sacred Color Inks and more. Technical Worldwide Tattoo Supply, your one-stop shopping destination for great service, best prices and top quality supplies. Coney Island Carlos Vintage Wines and Premium Spirits are undeniably distinctive. Selected for their unique, memorable flavor, Coney Island Carlos Vintage Wines and Premium Spirits are delivered to you in beautifully designed bottles featuring limited edition artwork. Coney Island Carlos Vintage Wines and Premium Spirits are available at affordable prices in fine restaurants, bars, and liquor stores. Or check www.coneyislandcarlo.com for availability.
My name is Dr. Robert Brevard. I'm here for Multimedicine in Westbury, New York. We're located at 1065 Old Country Road, Suite 214. Been here for about 15 years. The practice has medical doctors, physical therapists, chiropractors, acupuncturists. We also do pain management and we have orthopedists on staff. Here at Advanced Multimedicine Rehabilitation, we've got physical therapists on staff who treat an array of conditions from neck pain to back pain, shoulder pain, we treat carpal tunnel, we treat a lot of car accident patients, slip and falls, we treat patients with knee injuries, with ankle injuries, we have state-of-the-art equipment, we've been here for over we 15 years. We do a vast years. array of diagnostic testing from x-rays to EMGs. What is an EMG? It's a diagnostic test that allows a doctor to determine where the pinched nerve is. Cora is a physical therapist at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. She's working on Stephanie, who was involved recently in an automobile accident. Stephanie has tight thoracic and cervical musculature, and Cora is doing some myofascial release work and some therapeutic stretching doing it to help her with her pain. Vicki is also a patient here at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Vicki is now working her leg muscles, specifically her quadricep muscles, trying to strengthen them after an injury she sustained. find yourself in need of any type of physical therapy, please don't hesitate to call Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Located in Westbury, New York, in Suite 214. Phone number is 516-334-7000 or find us on our website at advancedmultimedicine.com. back con from alice in coverland and we'll get to con later on we'll see what he has going on we're back with carlo and brian all right so i want to get to some stuff here with carlo because um the, i did a little research because i i know a lot i know a little so you're always finding new things so i found out that i was born believe it or not 1961 and that's when tattooing was banned in new york city because of a hepatitis scare that's what i read and um, right. i know carlo had a lot to do with the re-legalization in New York City. In 1997. 97. Tell us yeah. your involvement in that. Well, I had a couple of shops already, and, you know, I had uh, actual street shops, and there was a couple of other guys in the five boroughs that had street shops, and it was a little, you know, we had a lot of money invested, so we were trying, we decided to try to petition New York City to get it legalized. We were fortunate enough to get a couple of liberal councilmen, you know, New York City council people, to, to stand on our side. Giuliani was the mayor back then, and uh, he really had no, not too much opinion on it. So um, me and another guy, West, that owns Unimax Supply Company also, another supply company, um, among some other tattoo artists, we had a few meetings first, and we got a, you know, a, like a little organization going. And when we, we did the petition at City Hall, um, we had, it was pretty favorable, because New York City is known for an artistic place. You know, we, we tried to explain to him that tattooing has become like an art. It's no longer, you know, the sailor and the, the jailbird getting it, you know. So uh, we, I went as far as to hire a, a lobbyist and an attorney and all that stuff. And uh, it, it wound up working out that they decided that, uh, that it was an art and they gave it to us. And then, I, I, you know, they, they asked us for uh, what kind of requirements there should be. 
So, you know, I made very strict requirements. You know, they asked my opinion. Well, I was mm -hmm. like the first guy they asked. So we made strict requirements, which made a lot of people, they were tattooing in their, in their houses and their backyards and stuff. A lot of those people got a little angry with me because, you know, they said, now you're making it difficult for us to work out of our house. But the only way you were going to keep it legit and legal so you could get insurance was to have all these full safes and have an autoclave, you know, and have a proper sterilization and have throwaway items. And, you know, everybody had to wear gloves. Everybody had to have single-use items. I wasn't even in the supply business back then, mm -hmm. where you might have thought people thought I was doing it for. It was so that it, it was more for the for the business to get it legal, you know. Then I immediately, after I had two shops when that happened, I had one in Brooklyn, one in Queens. Then I immediately opened ten shops. Within a year, I had ten shops gone. That became a big headache. <laughs> Sixty-five tattoo artists, fifteen pierces. So I was ready to give it up totally, you know. But, I, you know, I started tattooing as a hobby when I, w when I was in high school. And then I sort of left it. I went with my dad in the restaurant business. But once in a while, I'd go back and do a few tattoos. Mm -hmm. So that was the, the legalization part. Then when I, when I had all those stores, I left the restaurants. And I went full force with tattoos. And ever since then, I've, be, I've gone into the supply business. You know, kept the shops. They did many different things. And, they, you know, we produced uh, books. We produced... Uh, Flash and new items. Uh, um, we have like one of the best inks out there. You know, one of the top selling inks in mm -hmm. the world. Uh, we sell everything worldwide. My company's name is Technical Tattoo Supply. And, uh, you know, that's like my life now is the tattoo business, you know. It's and been that way for many years. And you sponsor years. a lot of big tattoo Yeah, we sponsor a lot right? of... Uh, Brian is one of our sponsored artists. Plus, he's a, a consultant to our company. He's very experienced. We have uh, Marcus Kuhn. Is another sponsored artist and a consultant. Then a lot of the old timers, like when you say old timers, like Philadelphia Eddie, um, Stanley Moskowitz. These are guys that have been around f for like 50 and 60 years. Yeah. I mean, you know, you need a little advice. Tony Polito from Brooklyn, he's one of the, the, the icons of New York City tattooing. Um, you know, I bring him into my office, you know, and, and we study inks and, and different, different ways that the inks should go in and different compounds and, you know, all these things. So, you know, I, I think their advice is pretty much like the best, you know. As far as then the, the more modern colors, the young guys like Brian, I have about 40 sponsored artists all over the world. I have some in, uh, I have a, a guy that's a consultant in uh, Bulgaria, Alex, and then we have Ivan Stankov in uh, Poland. And these guys, you know, they, they I send them stuff there because the uh, European regulations are, are different than the American yeah. ones. So they, they do my consultation on the, the inks that we send to Europe and stuff like that. So you know, it's in, the, in the business, since you're in the, the supply business, in the last 10 to 15 years, the difference... Now, an artist needs a lot more to purchase to do a tattoo than 10, 15 years ago, right? Oh, absolutely. They had a couple of colors. They had four or five colors. You know, if you were lucky, you got six colors. You know, an artist had six colors. He had a little black. They would mix their own stuff, and they would mix it in their basement, let it sit, and it would get moldy, and it was horrible. And, and the pigments they were using were, uh, well, you know, it was not available to them, so you can't really blame them. I don't mm -hmm. want to knock them, but that's what was available to them. Everybody had their method. Who used to mix it with vodka? Who used to mix it with Listerine? Who used to mix it with distilled water and all kinds of stuff like that? And there'd be arguments, and, and there was nothing disposable. The needles were always, you know, sterilized and reused. Tubes were sterilized and reused. Now pretty much everything is disposable. And back then, uh, like, you know, they really didn't have much. They didn't, weren't required to have an autoclave in this shop. Yeah. And, you know, now we have a lot of requirements, which is a good thing. Keeps the business good. I've never heard of anybody getting any bad diseases from tattoos. Everybody's always talking about AIDS. I've never heard of one case of it. Yeah. You know? Was there, like you said, everything's, you've got to throw it away. Disposable. It's, it's sterile when you open it. it. You know, so it's, it's a pretty good deal now. Well, now there's a... Excuse me? It's a lot different than... Yeah, it's a lot different. Have. Now there's a lot more, lot more supply companies, too. Mm -hmm. Some of the supply companies are, are, are Asian companies. And, you know, their stuff is a little sketchy sometimes. You know, as far as... Uh, especially the inks, you should never use the, those Asian inks, you know. Uh -huh. You know, nobody knows what they put in them. There's no regulations for them. Well, you'll have the artist that'll know a good ink because you could probably go online, if you don't know them, buy a cheaper Asian ink, right? And say, I'm going to get exactly. a cheaper, but it's not going to be as good... It's you not going to last. When it comes down skin. to the work, when you're done, you know what you That's did. That's big. And that the ink is, is yeah. The, the ink is definitely right? a, without a doubt. 
It's like, it's, even if you paint the wall with cheap paint, like how many times you have to paint that wall to paint what you could have just did in one shot. It's, it doesn't yeah, it doesn't fade. Big, you, yeah. you want to make it so it doesn't fade. But then again, you don't want no, 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 no uh, heavy metals or heavy minerals in the ink. You know, you, you, we're using much better pigment, more cosmetic pigment than the old iron oxide pigments that we used to use. Yeah. That, that's what the That's why I like, I mean, uh, I got my tattoos not that long ago, maybe I started 15, tw almost 20 years ago, but I was afraid to get color because everyone's colors used to fade. I was like, I'm not going through that, so I'm not going to do and color. A lot of colors well, gave really bad reactions, too. Yeah. yeah. You know, like to this day, an old timer that has some old red ink on him, goes in for an MRI, the magnets in the MRI, just they, the magnetic force will just pop your skin and pull that red, red right out. out. Crazy yeah. after they got a tattoo well, 30 years. Yeah. Sometimes, not all the time. Yeah. Depends on what the mix was. All right, we're going to hit a commercial. We've got to hit a commercial right now. We'll have Khan take us out. We'll hit commercial. We'll be right back. Worldwide Tattoo Supply is one of the largest suppliers in the world and your number one resource for top quality, affordable tattoo and piercing supplies. Technical Worldwide Tattoo Supply is the number one supplier of tattoo inks in the world with more than 200 products including Mom's Ink, Philadelphia Eddie's Traditional Inks, Paolini Sacred Color Inks and more. Technical Worldwide Tattoo Supply, your one-stop shopping destination for great service, best prices and top quality supplies. Coney Island Carlos Vintage Wines and Premium Spirits are undeniably distinctive. Selected for their unique, memorable flavor, Coney Island Carlos Vintage Wines and Premium Spirits are delivered to you in beautifully designed bottles featuring limited edition artwork. Coney Island Carlos Vintage Wines and Premium Spirits are available at affordable prices in fine restaurants, bars, and liquor stores. Or check www.coneyislandcarlo.com for availability. From Barton Home in Northport Village, I'm America Conway, and you're watching MadhouseTV.com. I am Tom Mealy for the Harrison Law Group, and I have been telling you for years that getting involved in an automobile accident is no joke. This is what we do. We're not new at this game. If you've been involved in an accident of any kind, and you go to a law firm that says you have no case, it's simple. It's because they can't do it and they don't get it. You need to call us directly at 1-800-INJURY-LAW.
We're back. Thanks, Con. All right, so we're here now. I'm going to get to my favorite segment. Um, what were they thinking? So last week we, we did um, crotch tattoos. This week we're doing belly tattoos. Okay, so um, I don't know if this is going to be as funny, but we're going to try the best we can. But it, this has been a really good segment. People love it. So we're going to get through like 17 pitches here. So let's get started. Let's show our first one here. Now, um, this young guy here, this guy, he's going to regret, regret doing this. He, he tattooed his favorite video game cartoonist on his stomach. Did a Pac -Man right? Yeah, the Pac-Man stuff, whatever. All his favorite games on his stomach. This guy's going to regret that when he gets a little older. And I don't know. I don't know what he's going to do. That's, a, that's pretty big right there. Let's go to our second one. Um, <laughs> this is a Kiss cartoonish with stuff. Um, little Eminem guys are the fans. So this is horrible. So I don't even know where this guy's going to go with this, but it's just a horrible tattoo. Um, Kiss cartoon guys, so um, that's horrible. <laughs> Let's go to the next one here. Now this girl, she must have had a really bad relationship or a bad, bad, bad breakdown, but she's never going to, any guy is not, she's never going to be able to live with another man, right? I mean, um, she, she writes on here, um, it's just horrible what she wrote on her stomach. I mean, I can't even read it. It's just horrible. She's not going to be able to live with this one here. Let's go to the next one. Now, this girl writes on her stomach, last night I dreams. All right? First of all, let's not have a word. Dreams. All right? Last night she dreams that somebody loved me. Yeah. Right? She put that on her stomach. That's going to go really well with her. Yeah. Last night she dreams. Wonderful piece. All right? That's a really, really good piece here. Um, now, this gets interesting here because now let's talk food. All right? Let's talk food here. Well... Feed me. Put food in me. Is that a great tattoo? I, I, I love these tattoos. Now, let's, <laughs> now, let's get, we got more we, belly ones here. Wow. Look at this guy. He's even, you know, we're even showing the cookie, trying to feed it. You know, I, I tried to figure out what that was. I, I don't know. It looks like a face of the Pillsbury Doughboy or somebody. It looks, I was just going to say it looks like the Ghostbuster. Yeah, a Ghostbuster right guy, right? right? Something like that. Now, this guy is like a walking billboard for Popeyes. Right? He must have lost the bet and had to put like Popeyes advertisement on his belly. But why would you put a, an advertiser Popeye's Maybe chicken? You, <laughs> Maybe they paid him. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, this is a great one here. Look at this one. This is the, the dough boy. This is just, uh, I mean, I love the belly button thing. Right? So the belly button, right in the middle of his belly buttons, the belly wow. belly boys. Uh, that's great. I mean, that's a big belly right there, too. Right? Now, let's talk in six pack. This guy went to the gym and he got himself a six pack. I that's that that's the way to get a six pack. Yeah. Yeah, right? that's so definitely a six-pack. Yeah. That is definitely a six-pack. That guy got a great tattoo right there. Um, this guy, I, I don't have an answer for this, but I just had to get it because why would someone he's put dynamite? dynamite? Oh he's my got God, dynamite. He's got dynamite. Unabomber. Unabomber. <laughs> he has three seconds left on his yeah. life. Besides, he has, a, he, has a, he has a nipple. Where's the fuse? Has, and he has a huge, a huge scar on his belly. From here, it looks like a... a I was, just, I was just going to say that. <laughs> Where's the fuse? Is the fuse in the middle? It's probably in his butt or something. I don't know, but that's horrible. <laughs> it's definitely a horrible one. Now, this girl has a baby, almost like sonogram, if she's getting a like sonogram, a sonogram or a, wow. a belly. Is that great? Mm. All right, so oh, now yeah. <laughs> this is a great picture. A face coming out of the stomach. I, I, lo I, lo oh, I love this stuff. This is great. Um, wow, yeah, that's an old yeah. right, now, now this, yeah. the last few here I really, really like. This is the dirty belly button one. Okay. Right? So imagine having a nice, fat, dirty belly button. Look at this, the dirty yeah. butt of the cat. That's pull a little lint out of it. I mean, why would you genius, do something like yeah. that? That is disgusting. <laughs> Look at this one. The cow. I could probably put my head in there. <laughs> it looks like the tunnel that that's doesn't a end. Well. It's like a stash belly button. <laughs> It's like the tunnel that doesn't end. That's crazy. Wait, I got my cigarettes in my belly button. I think about it. <laughs> All right. Now, this is the stinky finger. Two monkeys. A monkey looking to put his finger in the other monkey's butt. <laughs> wow. Is that great? Now, now, look at this monkey. He's turned upside down. The belly button there. And if you look closely, there's, it's like, look, I have two little nuts, too. There's like two little <laughs> nuts hanging out of his belly button. That's, that's hilarious, man. I don't know why anyone would do this. That's crazy. Now, if you're going to do a tattoo on your belly or on your stomach, you know, leave it up to the girls because, see, a girl could do something really pretty. Mm -hmm. All right? I know guys get them. I have something on my stomach. You do lettering, something that means something, something that's great, looks good, whatever. But it's really do something good. Let the girls do it. You know, 
These guys were probably drunk when they did this. I mean, food, um, belly yes, buttons with fingers. Yes. And, I mean, that's We're just... We're trying to save a lot of money. <laughs> that's... <laughs> trying, to, trying to save some money. But bucks. those belly button ones, I mean, the cow was oh, great. Yeah, and they got oh, yeah. Tijuana. <laughs> that was a great one, but Yeah, that, that, that's some funny stuff. I mean, I'm trying to get to, like, different parts of the body. Some will be funnier than the other, but there are some really funny, stupid tattoos out there. Like, I have one put... that will run with any of them up there. You do? Yes, so, sir. have you done anything really crazy and stupid that you really didn't want to do, but you had no choice? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, let me <laughs> hear A lot of times. Like, I, I think one, of, one, one, woman, uh, one woman came to me, and uh, she was just, like, really sophisticated type person. I think she owned like some kind of dog food company and she wanted me to do a Star Trek like emblem on her forehead. Like the ar like just the arrows right across her forehead. I, to me, she was like a real business type uh -huh. woman and that's what she wanted. <laughs> she an alien. Now, did you do it? Yes. Wow. Yes. Yes, yes, I did. Money, Jay. I, I know. I, you have to it's, give in. If you're in the business, you got to do a tattoo. If you don't make it, the money, someone else is going to do it, right? It I draw the line where it's a, if someone brings like their kid in and they want their hand tattooed or their neck or something, then I, you know, there's a, you know, but a, an adult that knows how to make their own decisions, yeah. I can't, you know. Well, I like last week can't. I had Maggie on and she said she had some guy that came in that wanted her to tattoo on his penis and she said well, she had to draw the line. It's going to be expensive and she was like, I, you know, she did really she didn't do, want did to she do. You got to handle the fee with that. Yeah, yeah. handle the fee, right? Yeah. And I was telling her that must be a hard thing to do. Does it have to be hard to do that too? <laughs> Oh, you got to. I you never put like yeah. a ruler behind it. Uh, you, know, you know what? I really it. don't want to know because I'm not going to get it done anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why anyone would want to do that to their penis. Really, I mean, I, really. Yeah. There's so many other parts of the body I, that get that, done. That is definitely bizarre. But, but yeah, I, I, you know, I love this segment. It's a great segment. I'm we had a guy once. It. Jay he came in at the, the Manhattan store and St. Mark's. He wanted a square circle. Now you go figure this guy out. I so Marcus Cool was there. He needed money for a fix. This kid so bad. <laughs> he goes, where do you want it? He goes, on the back of my neck. He goes, okay, I'll do it. He's, he did it on the back. I don't know. I don't even remember what it looked like. But he figured he couldn't really see it too much on the back of his neck. <laughs> we put away all the hand mirrors while he was doing it, you know. Yeah. And he grabbed the 400 off the guy and he ran to the park with the money. Wow. He wanted wow. a square circle. Wow. So um, let, let's talk a little bit um, to Carlo a little bit more. So Carlo actually is a sponsor. So... He owns Technical, if you see the commercials for Technical Tattoos, and, and Carlo also is Coney Island Carlo, and this is Carlo's liquor here. I have it around. People see it. Not every show it's out here, but I have it here, and Carlo owns Coney Island Carlo Wines and Spirits, right? Spirits and Wines, So tell yeah. us a little about what you got going on here. Well, it's a, that's a premium, high-end, uh, you know, top-shelf uh, liquor. Uh, your spirits, we have uh, vodka, tequila, bourbon, spiced rum. Better than the other spice rum. Um, we have uh, a gin, too. I have six spirits. We have different wines, Italian wines and American wines mm -hmm. also. They had come out with the Ed Hardy vodka a long time ago. I, I don't think they're doing it anymore. So my uh -huh. girl, she was trying to talk me into doing it, do a vodka, you do a vodka. These are all custom bottles I have made in France. See, uh, I don't know if you could... Each one has you a You can show on my edition. camera here. Come to my camera. I saw there's um, tattoo artwork that was put on these. These are like limited yeah, edition Yeah, limited bottles. edition. When we're done with the bottles, we have different artists, famous artists, yeah. do the artwork on them. But it's a great, great package. I showed the package once before. These, this stuff is great if you go to someone's house as a gift besides it being a good liquor because it's yeah, a great package. It comes in a tin, too, you know. Yeah, it's a great, great package. So, But um, you could get it on the website, CNC Liquors. If you go to Rock and Ink MC, you have the, the link up there. And that's another one of Carlos' new ventures, actually, right? Yeah, years a couple now? of years we're doing it now, yeah. Yeah, it, it's a... It's, it's a great thing. Well, yeah. thanks to my girl. She talked me into it. She, she said, talked if you into did it, it. You could do it. So I did it. Okay. But instead of one, I'm doing six and this and that. So, yeah, um, what I need to get into right now is, um, oh, where am I here? I'm trying to get my wits together. Um, I want to get to my model spotlight. Tonight, my model spotlight is Lena Page. She's from Lincoln, Nebraska. She's a hairstylist. She's another one of a, a great, she's on Facebook. She's got another over 7,000 likes, so um, a lot of people like her. She has amazing eyes. Besides that, she has this back tattoo with this big, beautiful eye on it also, so you get to see that in the video. But she's a really good-looking girl. Check her out. Let's go to Lena Page. This is Lena Page, my model spotlight. Hey guys, it's Lena Page. I'd like to first start out by thanking Jay Nova's Rockin' Ink MC for reaching out to me to do the model spotlight. 
I am a hairstylist from Lincoln, Nebraska. I started taking photos a few years ago, which led me to become a part of the Ink Addict Apparel family. Check them out at inkaddict.com. I am also a part of Think Your Ink, which is a community-driven effort to spread tattoo education and awareness to the masses. Visit their website at thinkyourink.com. You can find me at facebook.com backslash model Lena Page or follow me on Instagram at Lena Page underscore. To wrap things up, I would just like to thank all of my fans and the people who have supported me since the day I started. I am Tom Mealy for the Harrison Law Group, and I have been telling you for years that getting involved in an automobile accident is no joke. This is what we do. We're not new at this game. If you've been involved in an accident of any kind, and you go to a law firm that says you have no case, it's simple. It's because they can't do it, and they don't get it. You need to call us directly at 1-800-INJURY-LAW.
Medical Worldwide Tattoo Supply is one of the largest suppliers in the world and your number one resource for top quality, affordable tattoo and piercing supplies. Technical Worldwide Tattoo Supply is the number one supplier of tattoo inks in the world with more than 200 products including Mom's Ink, Philadelphia Eddie's Traditional Inks, Paolini Sacred Color Inks and more. Technical Worldwide Tattoo Supply, your one-stop shopping destination for great service, best prices and top quality supplies. Coney Island Carlos Vintage Wines and Premium Spirits are undeniably distinctive. Selected for their unique, memorable flavor, Coney Island Carlos Vintage Wines and Premium Spirits are delivered to you in beautifully designed bottles featuring limited edition artwork. Coney Island Carlos Vintage Wines and Premium Spirits are available at affordable prices in fine restaurants, bars, and liquor stores. Or check www.coneyislandcarlo.com for availability. We're back. Now we're back with Brian and Carlo. I want to finish up with them. So um, some of the other things um, with Carlo, he, he sponsors a lot of guys with the ink. And what is the, the favorite brand? Because there's a lot of different levels of brands that, that guys are buying. Yeah, right we, 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 our major brand is the Mom's Ink. I mean, it's out, uh, it's going on 16 years now. You know, it's worldwide. Uh, we've brought in a new black lining ink uh, that uh, we really developed real hard, which is called Black Barrel. And we also import now a new, uh, the top of the line Japanese lining and outlining and shading inks, which are called Irizumi. Oh. So we have the Moms line, the Black Pearl line, and the Irizumi inks. And they're pretty major sellers in the, in the market. Uh -huh. One of the top three or four companies in the world. That's good. I know um, you have some new stuff going on. You get involved in like the magazine side of yes. the business, yep. the publication and stuff? Yeah, right now I get an opportunity kind of fell in my lap uh, as far as... Uh, taken over a publication that's been around, it's actually a number of publications that's been around for, wow, it's had to be at least 20 years, 20 over 20 years. years. Very old, uh, magazine. Tattoo magazine company that... Uh, so when you lock that in, you let me know, we'll have you so back well, for that. We'll have you back for that. Sure. So what I got to get to, I want to get to my um, bougie, because um, we are running quick tonight, so I want to get to bougie and the girls. Um, the girls haven't been in the picture a lot, but the girls had some fun in the lounge at the hotel. And I have a little segment with Bougie and the Girls. So let's go to Bougie and the Girls and the Alice Cooper crew. In Austin, Texas tonight for a day off, we're with Warren. And Warren hooked up with some people. All right, you guys, what's happening? Hi, I'm with Pam. Hi. We've lost her arm. Hi, and Hi. she has Connie. I went to the pool today. <laughs> what are you watching? <laughs> hey, Rock and Emerson. Rock and Emerson. Rock and Emerson. See, somebody got it right. Rock and Emerson. No, we should do it man. again. Rock and Emerson. <laughs> <laughs> They've had a few drinks. They cleaned the bar out of tequila Wait, yesterday. Um, <laughs> all right, hang on. In Austin, Texas for the day off. And here we are in Austin, Texas. And what happened to the girls? They're small and don't blink. Okay, you're on. Go. Oh, what do we say? Hello. I'm one our Pam from Texas. I'm Connie. Let's go swimming. <laughs> I went to Rock and Ink MC. All right. Rock and Ink MC. All right. Yeah. Hi, All right. We have Tommy here. And we have Peanut and Andrea. Hello. All right. Say hi, Tommy. Yo, Jay. What's up, buddy? I think from the planks. I know. We're 
back that was Bougie and the Girls. I'm back here with Constantine, and Constantine's from a local band, Alice in Coverland. Local great band, so you guys are playing around. What do you got going on these days with the band? Oh, man, just, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, every day's a battle, but we try, but uh, thank God, I think things are on the uptick now. Okay. Um, actually picked up a really cool show, which will be this Saturday at, uh, in Port Chef. Mm -hmm. I'm Port Chef, actually right below the Arden. Okay. Which you were talking about, and definitely want to try to make it up there as well, right below at the uh, Mesita Coastal Cantina. Yeah, nice place. And uh, yeah, and uh, heard a lot of great things about it, and love Port Jeff. And um, you know, one thing about the band is that you know, like you said, we're a top forty cover band, and basically we're just all over the gamut. Well, uh, um, social media. Oh yeah, Facebook, um, website, Allure, of course, the website. Uh, www.allisoncoverland.com lots of links up there lots of really cool stuff mm -hmm. and uh, it's a great band uh, we pretty much cover everything um, including a little bit of shred which I did today <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and really it's um, it's all about the fun yeah having that's fun first and uh, that's pretty much it you know and um, we also obviously obviously we prefer to be here on Long Island, but we also love traveling. You know, we love yeah. going up to Newburgh. Uh, we love going up to Boston. Um, basically, whoever says, come up, well, we'll be so, there. All right. <laughs> so catch Alice and Cumberland out there. They're all over the place. Long Island, you know, in the summer now, with a lot of outdoor places. We've got a lot of stuff going on. So now I want to get to um, my Reverb Nation uh, music spotlight. Tonight I have Crash Midnight from Boston. These guys are great 70s, bluesy rock, Boston-type band. Great band. Also, I want to let you know next week, I have Randy Jackson from Zebra, local musician, world known, and all over the place. They sold a lot of records. I have Randy on here with me, and also Reverb Nation. They've been doing a great job with me. So tonight, Crash Midnight, Sean Soho will take you out to his video. So I'll see you guys next week. Be safe. Rockin' Inc. MC. Welcome to Rockin' Inc. MC. This is Sean Soho from Crash Midnight, and we want to thank Reverb Nation for the opportunity to appear on Rockin' Inc. MC's Video Spotlight. This is our song, Diamond Boulevard.
Everything I need 